Morning, Tom. Ike? James, where's Warren? Oh, he's in California for a spell. Gents, I'm gonna need those guns. Ike? Now, Ike. Son of a bitch. I just come on in. Are you Smokey? Hey, who the fuck are you? Get the fuck out! I said, are you Smokey? No, that ain't Smokey. Look, we need to find Smokey. Well, you found her. What the fuck do you want? You? You're Smokey. There's actually a girl named Smokey? I bet not even you saw that coming. I suppose some things do change. All right, here's the deal. We're looking for a lab. Shit. I don't make the stuff. I just smoke it and sell it. Well, not in that order. <laughs> Shit, you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, I like her. We're like on the same wavelength. What's your name? Phoenix. Your name is not Phoenix. How many times do I have to tell you? We're not calling you Phoenix. Fine. Lance. My name is Lance. But we call him Doughboy. I like that. It's cute. If I poke you, will you giggle? <laughs> Close enough. I bet you would like to know what kind of noise I would make if you poked me. Wouldn't you? Oh, I like her. I like you too. Lance. Lance. Oh, yeah. Lab. Um, so, about that lab. I told you, I don't make it, I just sell it. And smoke it. Right. <laughs> well, it's not that kind of lab. Hey! <laughs> Was that necessary? Do you have a problem with the fact, Lance, that the informant is an attractive woman? Do you have a problem with the fact that she has certain information that I'm here to ascertain and would do anything in my power to get that information? Would you like to flirt with her some more? Well, yeah, actually, I think flirting would be nice. You know, you always get more flies with sugar than vinegar, right? You never know. I might get laid out of the process. I doubt it. You never know. I'm pretty toasted. <laughs> please let me interrogate her, please. Before the day of the Seven Sisters, Donovan Enterprises had eight labs. Eight labs, each with a special division called the Moon Projects. Seven of those labs were in the seven cities destroyed by those nukes. An eighth lab survived. Where is the eighth lab? Why the fuck would I know? 
Diamond, come on, what the fuck is wrong with you? Lance, do we have a problem? Just because the informant is an attractive woman who bats her eyelashes at you, you go weak in the knees and forget yourself. I expected better of you. Have I made a mistake? Are you not the man I need? Donovan's eighth lab. I don't know what you're talking about! Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Do you wish for this to end? Then give me the information that I am seeking. Why would you think I would know something like that? Because your father was the lead scientist on a project in San Antonio called Blue Moon. Dr. Stanton. You want my father's files? Is that what you want? Well, if you want my father's files, then you can eat my shit and die. Where are the files, child? Fuck off! files are here, aren't they? We don't need her. The files are in the house, we will find them. We also don't need someone coming after us to see what we've ascertained. Pointless, Lance. You can't kill us. Yeah, but I can make you uncomfortable enough to give us enough time for her and I to get out of here. What are you doing, though? What I should have done a long time ago. Get out of this. I should tell you the same thing. But I'm starting to think you're enjoying this a little bit too much. You know, we could destroy you if we wished. Which is why I'm not going to stop you from getting what you came here for. You can go ahead and tear this place to pieces. Hell, burn it down for all I care. The girl lives. You want me to take him down, boss? Absolutely not. He's not in a position to hurt us. All he wishes to do is save the girl. Go. Man, I never thought you'd do this, Lance. Yeah, night of the die. I never thought I had a purpose. It's always a tool. Someone who did somebody else's bidding. But it seems I have a conscience after all. And more than that, the capability of choosing what's right. Bye, Diamond. Jeff. They're unimportant. He's in a position to hurt us now. The files are here. Search the house, find them. Okay, so Doughboy and Diamond are working with Jeff, but I thought that they went back in time. No, oh, they did, and then met Jeff back there. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Diamond and Doughboy are going about their life they join the project, meet Jeff, then they get nuked and go back in time to the 40s. Mm -hmm. Once back there, they meet up with Jeff and then continue working with him all the way through to where they pass themselves, getting nuked and going back in the 40s, and continue on through the timeline. Yeah. You've got to watch a lot of Doctor Who. Well, any minute now. I'm about to hand over two million dollars for a sword that may or may not be the Desert Rose. 
I would prefer to know whether the sword that we already have in our possession is or is not the rose. If it is, we could save the company quite a bit of money. I told you any minute now. You have about a minute to tell me whether or not that sword Ellis brought in is the rose. Or have we been conned yet again? Got it. This had better be it. Hello, Agent. Agent is fine. This will only take a moment. I hear you boys had a tough time trying to find this thing. Well, for your sake, let's hope that our tough times are behind us. Is that really necessary? Verifying that you're delivering what you promised? No. Her, bringing a beta. How'd you get her past the border? Betas are outlawed everywhere outside the corporate states. Well, we at Donovan Enterprises like to envision a world without borders. Right. I can detect several distinct blood samples, one of which happens to be over 2,000 years old. Odd. Considering the sword was forged only 800 years ago. I can positively identify Colin Donovan's blood. DNA 98% intact. More than enough. That's a good thing, right? Depends on your point of view, I guess. Always a pleasure doing business with Donovan Enterprises. I can still save the corporation some money. It would make conducting business extremely difficult if we were to kill off all of our associates when we were through with them. Call Kim. Let her know we're on our way back. I want to get this sword to the Atlantis Project within the hour. Thank you. That's right. Don't thank me. I could have not done something right. I should have done something earlier. Who were they? For that matter, who are you? <laughs> I thought I knew. I don't know anymore. I guess I never did. What's your name again? <laughs> Believe it or not, I've had quite a few names. Well, what's your real name? Well, that's a difficult question to answer, too. I guess, uh, is any one name less real than another? Okay, let's try this. What's the first name anyone ever gave you? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Hmm, someone famous, huh? Well, I guess it depends on who and what you know. All right, then I'll never believe your full name. How about just the first? The first name of my first name? Yes, <laughs> the first name of the first name anyone ever gave you. Morgan. Hey, hey, you drunk, are you in or are you out? That's bold. Pot's mine. 
You think that badge gives you the right to put your hands on me, boy? Hey, Doc, wake up. Finish this game and turn in. Horse shit, the turn pot's in. mine. Oh, that's all right, Well, That's all right, I raise. I, I do believe, dear boy, it is not your turn to raise, as I have not yet viewed my down cards. Wherever did it go? Oh, how embarrassing. I do hope this hasn't ruined my chances of winning. Worthless. No. No, wait. Let's let it be a surprise for both of us. You know, I think this is such a childish game. Too many chances that this is the card that I need. Therefore, I respectfully and cordially raise. You're just as stupid as you are drunk. And you are ugly. And I shall be sober in the morning. <laughs> I heard that once. I don't recall where. I know, it was England. <laughs> You've never been to England, lover. Well, I must have just made it up then. <laughs> I call seven and twos. What you got, boy? Aces and twos. I do apologize, Ike, but it appears the fates have favored me this evening. You know, I would have figured you to be a daisy at poker. As one man's skill over another is his innate ability to lie. You drunken bastard! I cannot disagree with you on your first point, so as I am drunk. But I will disagree with you on your second. As I am the son of a mother and father who were both married in a holy union. Whatever that means. One of these days... You're gonna get what you got coming! I do so love that warble you get in your voice, Ike. It reminds me of home. We had a picket fence and a gate with a squeaky hinge. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Enjoy my money while you can, you son of a bitch, because you ain't gonna have long to spend it. Well, I do believe that man just threatened me. I do believe he did. Should I do something about it? I think you should. Let it go, Doc. Go back to the hotel and sleep it off. But my dear Morgan, however should I maintain my good name as an upstanding citizen if I do not defend myself against such verbal accusations? I do hope you're standing to go back to the hotel. It would appear that tonight's alcoholic consumption has put me in quite a state. I think I shall imbibe my energies on some sustenance before I retire for the evening, if that is okay with you, my good deputy. Nope, I think that'd do you quite nicely. But I shall bid you adieu. I wish you wouldn't tie yourself to the herbs the way you do. And I wish you would not trade alcohol for lies. I thought we had settled this. I was drunk. We know what you can do when you get drunk. How can you find fault in me? As with all great confrontations, the one that has come into this pathetic little mine in town, my dear, is at the hands of a woman. Remember that when they are pulling the lead from my flesh and relishing the fact that it was your drunken tongue that put it there. Don't talk like that. There will be no bloodshed. But if there is, it will be at the hands of the herbs, not mine. Perhaps the bloodshed will be at the herbs and my hands. But the bloodshed is there, mark my words, and it is from your inebriated tongue. Oh, look, darling. There's Ike. I think I shall imbibe on some of this pathetic nourishment they call food. Piss off hard, hey, I'm eating. I can see that. It looks divine. May I try a bite? I've had just about enough of you, Holiday. Well, I thought we'd only just begun. I'm warning you, Holiday, one more time. Just one. What do you want from me, Holiday? Any number of actions will do. Perhaps you could brandish that firearm I know you have hidden on your person. Or perhaps you could tell the truth about the stage robbery instead of the cowardice lies you tell of my friends and I. Failing that, ten paces in the streets, I'll do just fine. Evening, Doc. Ike, for trouble here? Why, Wyatt, I was wondering if you were out and about this fine evening. Back away, Wyatt. I got no quarrels with you. <laughs> you sure have a funny way of showing it. Telling lies about my friends? If Doc were to gun you down right here now, 
I'd say he's well within his rights. Listen here, Lunger. Now, you think you can get away with anything in this town being friends with the law and all. But know this. It's not going to be long before the law changes hands. And when that day comes, so will yours. I look forward to it. Evening, boys. Tell me what we're going to do here. Are we going to sit down and play cards like civilized human beings, or am I going to have to drag you two off to jail and let you spend the night on a cold, hard cot? Well, Virgil, that's quite an invitation. Seeing as the atrocities this town calls them actors is more likable to a chalkboard. I know I prefer the cots in the Europe's jails. They are much more comfortable than anything I have paid for in this town. What say you, Ike? I think a turn in the jail will be worth the chance to stick my boot in your pretentious, arrogant ass. Go, Doc. Gentlemen. Doc, let's go. Another time, Holiday. How disappointing, Ike. I expected so much more from you. Come on, Doc, let's go. Doc? Come on, Ike. Let's go cool off and play some cards. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Sheriff? Virgil, you handled that well. Better than you, I'd venture to guess. Now me, I like draw. What about you, gentlemen? Sounds good to me, Ike. A few rounds of draw, get our minds back in line, wouldn't you say? Who's is that? It's mine. Not anymore. <clears throat> Hadn't seen you around here. What's your name? Most people just call me Smokey. Smokey, huh? They ought to call you shitty because you smell like it. <laughs> that mouth of yours is going to get us all in a world of trouble, Doc. Why, what? I thought the poetic verses that flowed from my mouth were the cornerstone of our friendship. A wild wit and a graceful intellect. Isn't that what you once said about me one time? I think my exact words were a wag and a scamp. Same fucking thing, Wyatt Earp. Don't you mince words with me. It shall be ten paces in the street with you. However, I shall be at a distinct dis disadvantage, as I will have just done ten paces with that idiot Clanton. Let's call it five paces, shall we? Grab his feet. Ha, you lose again, Smokey. You all right, son? Oh, hell, another longer. How many more of these cocksuckers are they gonna let in this town? You ready? I think I'm gonna play a few more right. Fine. Stay here, I'm gonna go where there ain't such a stench of death in here. Keep down that road you're on and you might find out that stench is coming from you, Ike. Really need to keep your friend in line. He's gonna go stirring something up that only needs stirring. Got it? You know, Marshal, your way of thinking is coming to the end. People are getting tired of your kind of law. What kind of law is that? Stirring this? Like you step out of line and you get punished for it? What's wrong with that? You know, Tom, we do have laws. Laws made by men better than you and me. Men like me, we just enforce the law. Because we don't, men like you will have your way. And your way is the way the gun, the way the knife, doing any damn thing you please. And we can't have that. Hell, Tom, we might as well turn this land back over to the natives, and I doubt they'd be as lenient as I am. Like I said, keep your friend in line. He's headed for a world of hurt. Are we all, Virgil? You're right, you know. What? The law is too strict. You gotta give it a little slack now and again. What do you know about it? How long have you been in this damn town? A while now. Well, if I were you, I'd stay low and out of sight. Because there's a fight coming between the herbs, and me and my boys are bringing it to them. We're gonna get them out of town once and for all. Well, why haven't you done something about it already? We will. Soon. Hell, maybe we'll run this town ourselves. 
I bet you old Johnny give us all stars and run the damn herbs out of town once and for all. You run the herbs out of town, they'll only come back. What are you saying? Make it so they don't come back. And do it soon before they get a chance to get more help. Hell, I'd do something right now if I had a damn gun. What the hell is that? Careful. Too many eyes here. You can just take it. <coughs> nah, I don't think so, man. Well, you know where to find me if you change your mind. You know, if I were you, I'd try a different game. You're lousy at this one. Minds always come with the sharpest tongues. What I do? Hmm. Thank you. Thank you for what? Choosing me. Considering what it is we're doing, despite what we're doing it for. I'm with you, traveling. We're together. That's what makes me happy. I love you. It's almost over. And I'll just be you and me. I need to make a pit stop. You need the shovel? No. Fish. I'm okay. Look, I'm sorry I, I didn't. It's okay, Mike. You did the right thing. And it's funny how, how much clarity you can have when, you're, when your life is at its end. So what can I do for you, Fish? I need you to stop. Don't do this. Do what? Set things right? I need you to let Earp die. I can't let you give that gun to McClowry. It's not use I already have. In your timeline or mine? Doesn't matter. You'll never make it in time to stop McClowry from getting the gun. Just let it go, Mike. Let the Clantons and McClarys kill the Earps. Just get to that portal. I'm only a couple hours out. You're six. You'll be lucky if you make the gunfight. Two. Six. Trust me. Dora, come on, we gotta go. You know, you surprised me, Fish. I thought you were a scientist, someone who understood truth. No, Mike, I don't understand truth. I understand fact, and there's a difference. I don't have time to debate semantics with you. Truth is what people see with their own eyes, what they believe to be true. Truth is, is different in everybody's eyes. Right, wrong, these are all truths. What might be right for you may be wrong for me, facts do not lie. They do not differ from person to person. Seven is still seven. It can also be four and three. <laughs> yeah, touche, <shame>, Mike. <laughs> Look, the fact is, is you have a, a very important destiny. And you know this to be true. Fact? Fact. And how do I know this? Because you couldn't remember, could you? You couldn't remember that yesterday. But you remember them every day since. You made sure you did. But every yesterday before that day, the day Diane was killed, you can't remember them. Angel couldn't remember yesterday either. She wound up being Carolyn. She came back. She was split somehow. Is that what I am? Is that who I am? Am I from the future, Fish? 
Yes, Mike. You're from the future and the past. You're a very special person, Michael. Uh, Mike, Frank, whatever. Your nature's way of repairing itself. Time, nature, fate, the timeline. It isn't supposed to do this. So the timeline created you. I don't understand. Th throw a rock into a pond. The water would be disrupted. It'll cause ripples. But, but, it, but in a few moments, the, the water will calm down and the ripples will be gone. The timeline is doing the same thing. The alterations, the, the changes we have made, the, 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 the loop Donovan has caused, those are the ripples. In order for the ripples to calm down and disappear, the, the timeline created you from time itself. Yes, Mike. You are from the future, but you can only get to the future by living through the past. Time, like nature, would always find a way to heal itself and make things right. You are that way, Mike. You are the timeline healing itself. Has it been worth it? All these sacrifices, your life, everything you could have been? Has it been worth all the sacrifices for this? Yes! Has it not been for you? No, no, it hasn't. I'm tired. I want it to end. I'm done making sacrifices. To me, it's not worth it. The sacrifices, the pain. I'm done working so hard just to lose everything. <laughs> now, I'm gonna do this one last thing, Fish. Just one last thing, and I'm done. Tara and I are gonna stay back here. We're gonna stay back here, live the rest of our lives, together and in love. <laughs> like, you don't get it. I don't get what? You can't quit. Not now, you're so close. There's too much at stake. You need to do what must be done. At what cost? At all costs! No, not anymore. I'm gonna save the herbs and then I'm done. I'm not gonna try and find any more of your portals. As a matter of fact, if I do, I'm gonna destroy it. I'm done trying to babysit you and guide you to do what's right. Right and wrong. Isn't that just a state of mind, Fish? No. <laughs> How much of that did you hear? Thank you. Mount up.